Hello, hello. Welcome a new inspired gang. Here we are again to celebrate Jesus and to recognize his leading and guiding us and keeping us in the midst of the storm. So last week, last videotape, we talked about what to do in the midst of the storm. What do we do in the midst of the storm? And I just want to quickly recap some of what we discussed that time. And then we'll go on to today's new exciting topic with lessons learned in the midst of the storm. What does Jesus want us to learn in the midst of the storm? There's a lesson to be learned. So briefly, we said last time, that when we are going through the storms, there are some things, some ideas that the Lord gave to me to share with you of what we can do to help ensure that we get through the storm successfully. And those included, we call on Jesus first and foremost. Call Jesus, wake him up. And then whatever we see him do, whatever we see that he did in the scripture, what did he do? He rebuked the storm and the wind. He said, peace, be still. That's what we are to do to our storms as well. And then we are to stand flat-footedly, assuredly upon the word of God. Because that's our anchor. It's the anchor of our soul. It's the thing that is going to keep when the boat is rocking and the storm winds are dashing against the grail. It is the word of God that is going to keep us anchored when we know that he is in the boat with us. And next I said, the inspiration that came from God to, that we should do during the storm, lean on Jesus, soak ourselves in him, love on him, acknowledge who he is, give him praise and glory and thanksgiving that yes, the sails may be torn, the winds are dashing, but we are still standing. We have not drowned. We have not been overcome by the storm. And he has arisen to deliver us and to take us safely to the other side. Soak ourselves in the word of God. Lean and love on Jesus. Stand upon the truth of the word that you know. And just praise him. Praise him. It may be feeble at first. You may have tears coming out of your eyes while you're praising him. But still praise him. Because he's God. He's supreme. He's Adonai. He's Elohim. Hallelujah. He's our all in all. He's Jehovah Shammah. The great one who sees ahead and makes preparation. He has already seen that this storm was going to arise. And he was bragging on us. When the enemy came and said, he said, did you consider my servant Ingrid? Did you consider that brother, my son over there, my daughter, my child over there? How much they love me and they are giving their lives to me. Have you, just like he did with Job, he said to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Because God already knew that Job was one, that no matter how much he suffered, what he had to go through, at the end of the day, God was confident that Job would still be standing and declaring the righteousness of God in the land. He said, I know my Redeemer lives and I shall see him at the last. In this flesh, I will glorify him. And so God is counting on some of us today that no matter what we go through, we will still be standing in the end. So today, God wanted me to stay on this topic of the storm. And today, the topic is lessons learned from the storm. What should I learn from the storm? Let us pray before we enter into this. Father, we just glorify you today. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the stiller of storms. God, I pray for my sisters and my brothers today, Father, who are watching this video today. They are going through severe trials and adversities, many of them, Father. Their world is turned upside down. They are in a storm, a, a storm in the teacup, so to speak. 
spiraling out of control, it seems. And Lord, it seemed to them that you're so far away, that you're nowhere to be found. You're not hearing them. But God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you through your Holy Spirit to strengthen your people. Remind them of the other storms that you brought them through. Let them to know that you're still with them in this storm. And it's not your will that they be drowned, overwhelmed by the storm, but that you have the power to bring them safely to the other side. Strengthen them in this battle. Help them to use the tools that you have already given them to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. And God, that you will never forsake your children in the midst of the storm. Praise God. So today, what are the lessons that I should learn or that we can learn from the storm? Now, as we see in the scriptures here, it's good to read the scriptures and know what the foundation is that we are standing on. On the same day, this is taken from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 39. On the same day, when evening had come, he came, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. Man, that's a frightening situation. The boat was already filling up. That means we are going down. This boat is going to sink. We are going to drown. Oh, but he was in the stern, asleep, on a pillow. Can you imagine this? This is anathema to anything that our natural minds can imagine. A boat is sinking with live people on board. Water is coming on. The disciples are doing their best to keep it afloat and bail out the water. And here is Jesus, the Son of God, the Eternal One, the uncreated Creator, sleeping in the stern of the boat. What do you think about this picture? It's maddening. It's mind-boggling. So, he was in the stern sleeping. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Lessons. Pardon me. Lessons to be learned from the storm. Let us look at the word that we just read. The first thing is that we can learn from the storm is to acknowledge who is in your boat. Who is in your boat? The most significant pe person there. Who is in your boat? The most significant person was not John, not James, not Peter. Because they're all drowning and full of fear. As we all would be too. But the most significant person that could make the difference between life and death was Jesus. In your storm that you're going through, in my storm. I need to acknowledge and recognize who the most significant person is in my life. Who is the one I've been serving all this time? Who is the one that brought me from childhood to now? Who is the one that brought me through all these other storms? Jesus is the one. And that's the one I have to call on. Who is in your boat? Not your best friend, not your boyfriend. 
not your wife, not your husband, not your children, with all their, what they have to offer. Jesus is the only one that can still the storm and make a difference. Number two, we must guard ourselves, ourselves against impetuosity and the quickness with which we blame God. I have been there. I'm guilty of that. When we are going through a storm and it seemed to be lasting longer than the time span or frame that we think it should last, the first impulse First reaction is to blame God. When we do that, God wants me to realize this is a revelation that I'm getting. This is for me as well as for anybody else. I must refrain from blaming God. When I blame God for what is happening in the midst of a storm, I am joining the rank of the enemy the accuser of the brethren and the accuser of God who is the devil. When I blame God when things don't go right, so to speak, quote unquote, what we understand to be right, when I don't understand what God is doing or what the lesson is behind what's happening to me, I can't see what glory God can get out of this. Why? Did I have cancer? Why did my mother have cancer? Why did my brother, my sister die so young? Why did they die in that accident? Why didn't God do something to stop that accident? He said he's almighty, he's all powerful. He's all, why didn't he stop these things? And the enemy wants us to react by blaming God. You see, uh, let me forget about this Christian pathway. Let me go and do my own thing and carve my own way because after all, I've been serving God for so long and he's not hearing my cry when I'm in trouble. He leaves me alone. I have to suffer humility, degradation. I become a mockery. People laugh at me and say, I am no good, I'm stupid. Why do I have to suffer these adversities? And I begin to blame God. And once that happens, if Satan gets you hooked in that mindset, you can't get out. All your world becomes cloudy. All your world becomes negative. And now the only person who is on your boat that can help you, you have severed communication with him. You have severed the relationship. And you're trying to go back into a dark place, into a slippery place to make allegiance with your arch enemy, Satan, to join him against God. And he's so happy. He wants you to be there because then he can fill you with other negative thoughts about God. Until you get to the point where even if a thought comes in your mind to call on God, to repent on God, Satan said, oh no. Remember what you just said about him? He's not going to forgive you. How could you expect him to forgive you and help you now when you just said there is no God and you don't believe in him and he has forsaken you? So refrain from blaming God. Notice the accusatory tone in which the disciples approach Jesus. Don't you care? Don't you even care that we are perishing? If you're God, why don't you do something? And all this time, Jesus was just calmly. I've never seen this. I wish I am. I, I want to get to that place like Jesus. We're in the midst of the storm. I can just say, Lord, you have my back. I commit this thing into your hand. There's nothing I can do. I will not stay up all night worrying about it. I will not pray 1,000 prayers because that shows unbelief. I pray I trust you. I will reiterate and rehearse your word. And I'm going to sleep because you say you're the master of the wind and the waves. I give it into your hand. I want to get to that place like Jesus. And he has given us the ability through the Holy Spirit 
That's why he said to the disciples, after, notice, after he rebuked the storm and still the wind, then he said to them, why are you so fearful? Why are we so fearful when things are topsy-turvy? It shows that we really do not know God as he can be known, as he needs and wants to be known. We do not know him. We sing the hymns, we dance, we shout. We read the word, but the word is not getting in to our minds, to our souls, to our spirit to where it needs to get, of who this man Jesus really is. By our actions, by our first reaction, by the words that we speak about him, it shows we really do not know him. And this morning I stand before you as a guilty one. I am repenting right now, God. Forgive me for not believing in you. The way you want me to believe in an absolute, sur complete surrender, absolute trust, I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to get me there. Get me there, my Lord. I need to believe in you and to know you like you can be known in your fullness in who you really are, in knowing your power like St. Paul says, after all his suffering and all the deep revelations that he had from God, Paul said, that I may know him, that I, oh, that I may know Jesus, really know him, and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. I want to know him. I want to know him. I must know him. I cannot go through another 20 years and not really know him. I can't. I can't. I must know Jesus for who he is. That he's in my boat that he will not abandon me in the midst of the storm, that he has the power to overcome any storm that the enemy may throw at me, that he has a purpose for letting me go through the storm. And one of the purposes is that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and that I may become more like him. That I too can speak to the storms, not only in my life, but in the lives of the members of the body of Christ. And say, peace, be still, you storm. For he has given us, he has given the power that he had in him. He transmitted it to the church the body of Christ of which we are a part. And the same spirit that dwells on Jesus dwells in us. That's why we are able to be called sons and daughters of God. That I may know him. Refrain from accusing him. Once I was mad at God, I was angry because I was suffering and struggling and all kinds of things were going on. I didn't say it out, I didn't speak it, but in my heart I was thinking, God, is this the reward of the righteous? Is this the blessing you talk about? Why is my life so full of turmoil and trouble? I can't see any blessing. It's nothing but hardship and chaos. And I read the scripture, I came upon the scripture, and it was in... Not the King James Version, another version, but it literally said, You have been hard. 
in your accusation against me. You have been hard in your accusation against me. I realized in my attitude, in my belief, in my mindset, in my anger, and my foolish lack of understanding of who God is. I was accusing him of not caring and of sending these storms that he knew I couldn't deal with, I couldn't handle, and he was nowhere to help me. That thing struck me like a lightning bolt. You have been harsh in your accusation of me. I had to repent and humble myself. I ask the Lord to forgive me and show me the way out. Lessons learned in the storm. Your ship may be torn apart. Your sail may be torn and ravaged. But you are going to make it through to the other side. If he has to take you on a piece of raft, whatever it takes. If he has to send a helicopter to pick you up, whatever it takes. You are going to make it through to the other side. For he's the master of the wind and the wave. And he cannot fail. Lessons learned in the midst of the storm. Last of all, he wants you. Instead of being inundated by the storm after a while, he wants you to be so exercised in your faith, so built up in your faith, to become a Christian warrior. That when the storm comes, because more storms are going to come. Remember even when Jesus was tempted by Satan, and after the Lord passed every one of the tests by saying, it is written, it is written. And he overcame the enemy. The Bible says Satan left him for a season. For a season. For a season. And God is so good, so caring and so merciful that when we have come through a vehement storm, he knows we are weary. An arduous battle. He knows that we are weakened physically, mentally. We need rest. We need to recoup and regroup. That's the purpose of the calm. That we can rest after the storm. After the storm, this is one of the lessons, there will be a great calm. A time of rest, reflection, regrouping, rebuilding, building up ourselves on our most holy faith. These are the lessons and more that we can learn in the midst of the storm. But most importantly is to know that he wants us to come to know him as he can be known, as he is. That we may not inadvertently, foolishly join the ranks of the enemy in accusing him of not being a loving caring, kind father that he is. It's a revelation today. We are saying the words, we are reading the scriptures, we are doing all the right thing. But he wants us to move from that level of just reading, of just going through the motions and the rituals to the level, to the frequency of knowing him as he knows himself, as he can be known. This is what he wants to do in the midst of our storm. And there is an evangelist that I have met, that I heard him. He's a singer also, a gospel singer. And he penned, I'm not sure if he wrote the song, but I know he sang it. It is so this, I have his CD and it ministers to me so much. I want to find him. I think he's somewhere in New York. If you know where Evangelist Goldburn is, I would like to get in touch with him. You can send me his detail. And don't forget, as I remember now, subscribe, share with your friends, gather around, 
this merry-go-round, this altar of prayer, where God is unveiling truths and revelations to us each week. But his song, I'll just read some of the words of the song. It says, no matter the chorus, what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Though my ship may be rocking and my sails may be torn, I shall rest. Hallelujah. Shada Basaya. I shall rest in the eye of the storm. One of his choruses, one of the verses said, There have been times when life hits against the grain. There have been times when I've complained when life hits against the grain. And I recall those times you took me down to my knees. But there's one thing I could not do. Yes, I owe it all to you. For it was you, Lord, who took my place on Calvary. No matter what storm clouds may walk this ship of mine, a light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Though my ship may be rocking and my sails may be torn, I shall rest. Yes, come and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens light. I shall rest. I shall rest in the eye of the storm. Eye of the storm. Yea, I shall rest in the eye of the storm. Know this, no matter what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior, a lighthouse, the light of my Savior is standing there on the hilltop, that lighthouse, that light will lead me safely through the night. He will lead you safely through the night. Though your ship may be rocking and your sails may be torn, know this, you shall rest. Come and learn of him, for his yoke is easy and his burdens light. You shall rest. You shall rest in the eye of the storm. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. You're going through a difficult, turbulent, trial but know this jesus if you know him as lord and savior and even if you don't and you call upon him today in sincerity lord save me we are about to perish my family and i save us lord don't accuse just call on him for his help he will come and jesus will outlast your storm.
Thank you. Inspire the new gang. Come again. Bring your friends. Remember, subscribe, share, like, give your comment, and pray for this channel. In Jesus' name. We love you. I love you. Sending your prayer requests in your comments. You can put your comments your request until the lord enables me to get a an email system going as i'm learning this system i will get more proficient at it and we'll be able to communicate better god bless you inspire the new gang keep the faith you are going to make it to the other side and there in the midst of the storm if you do those things that the lord told us to do you will find Jesus in the midst of your storm. God bless. Ah.